Cool. We are live, guys. Um, so, uh, guys, I just want to uh, I just want to let you guys know this is the Fat Fit Vlog, um, episode number eight. Um, I have my good friend Kenny Kenji Gallo. Uh, just want uh, if you can just introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Kenji Gallo. Nice to meet everyone. Yes. Um, actually, uh, Kenji was actually the very first um, uh, Google Hangout um, podcast interviewee that we had, but um, I actually made the mistake of uh, not being able to record it due to some technical difficulty. So I'm just so glad that we can have you back on live and record it this time. Um, what, what have you been up to, man? Oh, let's see. Been training, writing, uh, trying to put together a gym. So just working out, doing my thing. Uh, gym in, in your actual compound? No, I'm going to put together a gym, um, let's see, close to my church in a town close to where I'm living right now. Okay. And uh, yeah, would, would this would this be purely you, um, or are you are you partnering up with somebody? No, it's going to be just me. I'm going to do. Uh, I have a boxing ring already. I have mats. Uh, I'm mostly going to concentrate on fitness. The boxing and the MMA will be for me. You know, just for me and people I, I want to train. Okay. Yeah. So it'll yeah. pretty much be a, a fitness gym. Correct. It's okay, going to cool. be yeah. I'm gonna concentrate on. Uh, I'm gonna do the rock steady boxing for Parkinson's patients. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's why I need the bags and the boxing ring. But I'm not really. It's not gonna be like a fighter's gym I where I'm gonna it. depend on fighters. I'm just gonna depend. Just train normal people, and uh, I'm gonna do silver gloves for older people. Got it. For like you know, 65 and over. Just because you retire doesn't mean you have to quit. That is so. that is awesome, man. I definitely want to um, talk about that a little bit later. Um, but uh, uh, so basically. The point of the Fat to Fit uh, podcast, Kenji, is basically, um, obviously, you've seen me through uh, most of my transformation. And, um, you know, I just want to really help people go from, you know, obviously, physically from fat to fit, but also um, our model is to go from fat to fit inside and out. And, um, you know, I think a lot of, I, you, I think you would agree with this, is the mental is what really drives us to, you know, take the physical action. I don't know if you would agree with that or not. Yeah, it, it's the mental. What the problem? The thing is that you have to make a decision. You can't come up with a word like, "Hey, I'm going to try to lose weight." I hear this all the time. Uh, New Year's, I'm going to try to lose weight, or I'm going to go on a diet. You, it's never going to work. You're, you're already setting yourself up to fail. You already said, "I'm going to try." You have right. to say, "Like, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to change my eating habits. I'm not just going to diet because there is no magic pill, and there is no fast way or easy way to do it." And uh, you know, yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. I, you know, I, I've tried so many different things. I've tried, you know, uh, Asian herbal medicine. I've tried starvation. I've tried, um, you know, uh, boxing was the very first thing that I tried. Um, obviously, we met at Pound Pound, and that was actually kind of where I started this entire journey. Um, but uh, so I kind of what what I wanted to do today was um, instead of talking so much about the physical aspect, which is the working out, I think, uh, you know, there's so many other channels and places where they can learn that from. But um, First off, I just kind of want to maybe if you can give them a general context of your story because I know you have such an insane story as to your past to where you are right now. And then I kind of want to use that as a context to to basically use your story to help people realize how you rewrote your story as to how your life is going from the negative to the positive and how you use fitness to do that, if that kind of makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So basically my life, uh, let's see, I was a criminal for 20 years. I was with the uh, Los Angeles Mafia and the Colombo family, crime family in New York, which is one of the five uh, major mob families of New York. They call them the five families. Colombo is among the most violent of them. Um, I was uh, just a thug and a, a drug dealer and a gambler and a, a loan shark, a Shylock for you know, most of 20 years, I ended up wearing a wire. The FBI in 1996 gave me an offer to uh, change my life. They, you know, they said if I wore a wire and I worked with them, then they would give me a fresh start. I uh, decided at that moment that I was going to change because I already knew that uh, my life was going down the toilet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had been thinking about it for a while and I needed an avenue to quit. And that was it. And they told me it was going to be, I asked them how long it was. And the guy said, it's going to be six months to a year tops. Jesus it, ended Christ. Up, it ended up being eight years. Yeah. Yeah. And that's insane. 
And during that eight years, I mean, I had a lot of time because I was I was playing a criminal. I'm still around, and I started seeing all the people for like what they were and what the life was. And I was, you know, I got I got depressed. I, I you know, just my life. I was looking at my life, and I look at all my friends that that did everything right, and went to school, and everything, and they were having great lives. And I decided, like, you know, I can't be just known for this. I used to like that reputation, and then I just couldn't do it. So after. Uh, after I was done, they they hid me in a safe house in uh, Idaho, and uh, and that was, was for two years, right? Yeah, two okay. years there. And what happened is I was like afraid at first to even leave, and then I started going out early in the morning, like at five in the morning, and I started jogging. And one time when I was jogging, I saw an MMA place, <clears throat> and then I went back there and I asked the guy. The guy told me I, he had early classes, and I said, "Well, how much is it for the month?" He goes, "Well, it's." hundred dollars unlimited uh -huh. and i go so I like well sign me up <laughs> i go so let me get this straight i could come like early in the morning and come to every class until nighttime he goes yeah if you want to okay so i started coming and then after about two weeks he said look man i know you've done this before and uh you want to come like you know teach some classes for me and i'll pay you cash and i'm like oh, oh wow. okay and then that's how i did i bought my laptop i started writing like um i started writing a blog Original, my original blog was called Crime Man, <clears throat> and um, I just started talking about like my life and what was going on, and um, I wasn't really sure. Like I really wanted to write something, but I wasn't sure in what direction I wanted to take my life at that point. So I just kept working out. And I tried to get my mental because the more I work out, the more you work out, the more your endorphins kick in in your head. The better you start feeling about yourself, and that just brought everything out. And then from that. Uh, after I got out of that, I left the program and um, I went to Europe and I got my head together. I just started writing a book from all my blog stuff. And with that, um, it just everything started falling into place. I, I ended up getting an agent. And then it was another almost two years before uh, I was able to. Um, you know, what's the age? I got rejected by a hundred book companies, hundred hundred publishers. I read and, that. Yeah, and then I finally met, I met a uh, through a friend of mine. We met a girl who was a vice president of a publishing company, and she bought our book, and that was it. And then after that, I just started, uh, you know, thinking about what I wanted to do with my life. And at first, I thought I was going to be just like Hollywood Hollywood writer, and then I just. Uh, I moved to LA from Orange County. I worked at Rain Training Center in Orange, in Orange Mark County. Munoz. Yeah, with Mark Munoz. And I learned how to train people. And I was up in LA and I started working at Fortune Gym. And uh, I started training more and more people. I started training actors and actresses and, and world champions. And I decided that uh, after a while, I just, it, after six years of that, I just decided, you know, Hollywood just isn't the place for me. I need to clear my head. I okay. need to figure out what's right and what I need to do. And I moved to Illinois and I just, you know, started living on a farm, started living clean, um, really started looking at myself, writing more and deciding like what I wanted to do. And I wanted to do things. I became a Christian. So I, I, everything changed and I wanted to be more positive in life and I needed to show it, not be like so angry with the chip on my shoulder like I had in LA. And I just started examining like, all the things and like you know why over the years like uh, i would fail at certain things and i started figuring it out like you said it, it's mostly mental it you know you have to have the will and the, and the determination to make things happen and you got to stick to things i could always stick with things but i would let my own ego and stuff get in the way and i wouldn't listen to anyone but the good thing about like i'm a jiu-jitsu black belt but Part of jujitsu is you have to humble yourself, and you're going to get tapped out like a million times by yes. a bunch of smaller people. And so you have to take instruction. And then I started thinking, you know what? You could take instruction from anyone. And I started look, you know, looking at that. And you take the, you know, you have to take the good with the bad because everyone has their two cents in with exercise and 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 fighting and stuff. Yes, but yeah. but you know, if you if you if you really investigate and you really think about like what it breaks down to, it's just common sense. Like if it sounds too good to be true, it is. There is no one magic exercise. There's no one magic diet. There's no magic pill. You have to do everything and be well-rounded at everything you do. And that just translates into whole life. You know, if you look at that, if you have that approach where 
hey, I'm going to like, you know, I'm going to, I'm never going to stop learning. I'm always, I'm never a master in anything. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to keep, you know, keep reading. I'm going to keep investigating. I mean, your whole life I mean, is going to take you, off. You, you being a, uh, you know, a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt, um, number one, how long did that take you? Like 10 years? 15 years. Okay, 15 years. Yeah. Um, that, I mean, that that's, uh, that's a decade and a half. And, you know, for somebody to fathom, like, I'm going to put in that kind of work, you know, especially later on in life, I think people kind of get used to, like, okay, school, it takes, a, you know, you're supposed to do it so people do it. But for you to do this when it's, you know, like after, you know, a, set, a certain age, that's, that's super, that's a super accomplishment. Now, you being a jujitsu black belt, is it hard for you to humble yourself um, in front of others, or is this something that you have to constantly try to do? Or does it come naturally to you after no, much practice? No, after much practice, I just uh, I'm. But what I did is I learned that if you want to learn, you have to be a good listener because people aren't aren't going to be willing to help you if you can't listen. If you can't be taught, like you see so many people that during the during the my time in. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and an MMA fighting period, I would see so many people with talent come in. And those people usually don't last. Mm -hmm. they, may, they maybe last a year or two years. And it's the guy that never gives up. You can't teach heart. So it's the person that just keeps, he may be mediocre, but they just like, just sheer will just keep coming in. Like I just, tra I trained like two a days a lot. I train with, I would always try to go with someone much better than me and everything. And the best person in the room is who I go to. But if you have an attitude, they're not going to want to help you. Right. Yeah, no one's going to want to help you. I mean, you you know, you were at the boxing gyms that we were at. And you like, we can't pay a lot of those trainers. But a lot of guys will just come up to his world champions and say, like, Jeremy, you know, hey, man, hit the bag this way or do this. You're right, and right. They'll, they'll give you that nugget. But if, you're, if, you, if you have an attitude or you're a jerk, they're never going to help you. And you're never going to get to the next level. And – and it's you know, and you have to remember, like jujitsu, boxing, even even the fitness period is it's not you're not competing against other people; you're competing against yourself. It's only the only person that you have to satisfy is yourself, and you're and you know when you're going to be happy. Right, and, and uh, that's something I struggled with for a very long time, Kenji. Like you know, like I was always trying to compare myself to other people, and I think uh, so many people that are trying to go on this, you know self-development journey or you know uh you know fitness journey whatever you want to call it it's at the end of the day it's really just self-development and i think the moment that you realize that it is competing against yourself and you decide that that you're okay with that i think that's kind of when things really started falling in place for myself and for so many other people well, that's when it came together for me when i finally decided look i, I really don't care about what anyone else is lifting, what anyone else is doing, yeah. or what they're fighting at. I just, <clears throat> I want to be like the best version of myself that I can be. And, and then, you know, like along the way, you, you have to, you have to pass it forward. You have to help other people. I help other people as much as I can. And I'm willing to help anyone as long as they're willing to help themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's really disheartening. I don't know about you, but when you, no matter how much money someone has, when they, when you train them and they don't care, you know oh, what I mean? They don't show yeah. up. They're just late, and they're just like it's just. Uh... Yeah, it's just like not being on the same page. Like it's you know I struggle with this as a trainer uh, a lot. Was sometimes I felt like my desire for you know for them to change was so much higher than what they wanted for themselves, and that you know that disparity really didn't allow us to have a good relationship. You know. Yeah, I my thing is I'm like so excited because it's such a simple thing. <laughs> you know, it's like you could change someone's life. Like I look at people and I meet them and I think, man, I can really change your life. And this could, if you just grasp this concept, like, oh, but I always hear this. Oh, but, you know, it's so much, it's not fun to eat that way. It's not, I go, well, would you rather have type 2 diabetes? I mean, like, seriously, life is not about fun. But if you just give it some time, make it a habit, it is fun. Right. So um, obviously, you know, there's a lot of health issues. and imminent you know like dangerous to your livelihood yet people don't you know for some odd reason that doesn't seem to be a great motivator as a matter of fact somebody that wants to look good to impress somebody and get abs seems to have a much more motivation than somebody that could be an imminent danger of their livelihood like wh why do you think that is you know what people are vain but also because 
it's just we we've been conditioned, especially if you look at all if you look at if you look at every commercial in the diet industry, it's like a two billion dollar a year industry. Yeah. And and there's a reason because everyone's looking for the easy way, the the quick fix. And they always think like, oh, what about this diet? What about that? Diet? I go, why don't you just work out six, six days a week? I mean, seriously, just try it. Thirty minutes. Uh, oh, I don't have time. You have time to sit in front of the television, you know. But they they want everything quick, but with, they don't want to have to stick with it. So. To them, it's easier to take a pill because to them, it's less. It hurts less than it does to work out. It's easier to take, uh, you know, if you're type two diabetic, it's easier for you to take insulin than it is for you just to go to the gym. I hate cardio. Right. Really, really how when your foot falls off, like how are you going to feel? You know, and that's yeah. and that's the problem that everyone is having is uh, they just they just can't stick with it. Uh, and, and I'm, a, I'm amazed, like they. Like people can't come like two days in a row. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand that and I don't because I've been on both sides. Uh, it took me a very long time to make that switch to, you know, to be in the kind of lifestyle that I have, that lifestyle habit that I have right now, but that took practice, you know. Um, but I guess the reason was like I just really wanted it super bad. And as somebody that's helping out people all the time, do you believe that you can convince somebody to live like that when they don't want to be. So basically, is the uncon is the non sellable sellable when it comes to this lifestyle? Look, you no. Know, if if they don't, or they're not determined to do it, they don't want it, it. You cannot do it. It's like trying to like if someone's on alcohol or drugs, you can't force them. They can go to all the rehabs they want, but they're just going to go right back to their e eating habits. You know, if they don't want it, if they won't get up. Look, if you put it off, if you just don't, the best time to make time is early in the morning before you get everything done. Because then as the day goes on, the problem becomes like, you have things to push it away. It becomes easier to say, oh, okay, I'll just do it another time, I'll do it later. If you just get, get it done, get it done early and get it over with, you're done with it for the whole day, you have your whole day free. Plus your metabolism is, is better that way. But if you can't even make that time, like 45 minutes a day, really, seriously, is it that much? I mean, you can watch TV for more than that. Yeah, I mean, you know, Logically speaking, I think you and I both know like, you know, like whatever excuses people are making, it just completely doesn't make sense. Um, but, you know, they've just been so conditioned to think that, um, that, you know, they don't have time or they don't have the resources or whatever the case is, which is not true. I mean, you can Google and YouTube anything that you want. Information is out. There's never a lack of information. I think it's just a lack of, you know, desire or reason to do something, you know. Um, and so, uh, Let's talk about super, uh, uh, let's talk about, you. I think one thing that you, tend, you seem to have is you have this in, in, intense, you know, a mental toughness. Is that something that you cultivated over the years or is that something that you learned from somebody? Um, how, how does that work? No, I've just, I've, I've cultivated over the years. I've learned it. I mean, I went to a, I grew up and I went to a military school. Yep. Um, and then of course I was, a criminal and I was in the mob and you have to like, there's no excuses. You can never make an excuse. Like you can't come back and say like, Hey, I was late because they don't want to mm -hmm. hear it. Okay. They don't care if your mom's sick, your girlfriend's sick, your grandma's dying, your, your brother's dying. It doesn't matter. You said you're going to be somewhere and there's no excuse to be late. I think today I've written about it a couple of times. I think uh, today it's so easy for everyone just to be late. They think nothing of being late. Like your time means nothing. It's rude. Look, if you're going to, if, Look, if it takes like an hour to get somewhere, leave an hour and a half early, 90 minutes. So what? Be on time. Show up. Yeah. That's it. And and people just don't want to do it. Like I I I am like a stickler. I am on time. I show up. I remember I, when we were going to pound for pound uh in yeah. Beverly Hills, like uh literally like you would like come like 30 minutes ahead. I don't know what you were doing in the car, <laughs> but you would come early or you would just come in shadow box and whatnot. Yeah, um, you know, even Jose. I mean, you know, obviously he was my box trainer for a long time. He still is uh, from time to time, but he'd be like, uh, he would be like, Ken, um, did I miss the time because you're here an hour early? Like, no, I just want to come and you know warm up and shadow box because I just want to make sure that when you're ready, like I'm all ready to go. There's no warming up. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's and it's it it's, it, it translates into everything because I I know people that are like, man, I'm I'm taking a flight, but my flight's not till eight o'clock. And then they wait to the last minute to leave, even though they have to go through TSA check-in and checking their bags and everything else, and they barely make it or they miss their flight. Like, how do you miss it? Dude, your day is ruined anyway. You're going to have to sit in the airplane. So yeah. why not just go early and get it over with? Right. Uh, obviously, 
honestly, what, what I, I've tried to do and uh, something I've been getting better at is trying to make sure that everywhere I go, if I have, if I have extra time, that I always have some kind of work to do. I have my phone or my tablet or something where I can continue to work so that I'm not messing up the flow of my of my day. Um, because I think more over, over time, I've realized, you know, I, I kind of bit off a little more than I can chew in terms of the workload that I have right now. But, you know, it's forced me to become so much better with time and really respect time because that's one thing I can't get back. That's right. But if you if you map out your day and respect it and you have a schedule and you know what you're going to do, you could accomplish so much. You do know? you have a daily schedule, like a like a super tight schedule where like yeah. every five, 15 minutes, like I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Is that on a daily thing? Yeah, pretty much. Get, okay. up, at, get up at 305, you know, walk the dogs, do this, post, uh, post out all my social media stuff, post up the pictures. Um, then I have a class at five o'clock. I have a class class at six o'clock. A class at seven, and then the eight thirty class Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays for uh, Parkinson's and silver gloves. Rock, Rock City Boxing, right? Yeah, cool. And then, and then I do, um, and then I go train my side. Go to you know, I go train. I go spar with people, yep. and then I write. You know, I mean, it's like I'm like right on. And is, is that uh, uh, I, I saw a couple of pictures from there. Is that Clay Guida's gym? Yeah. Okay. Cool. It is. It is yeah. Uh, and so. just a random thing. Uh, you said you started jogging when you were, you know, uh, up in Canada, and you were afraid to leave, so you started jogging early in the morning. Did that kind of cultivate the whole like three o'clock in the morning, um, you know, uh, walk the dogs thing? No, I was all. I always even because I went to military school, uh, so I always like to get up early. So I think uh, the revelry the, when you woke up, the the bugle would sound would be six, and I think we had to be in formation by six thirty. Okay. But I like, but I like to get up earlier than everyone else. Uh, relax, drink maybe drink some coffee, and then go to the shower. Take a shower so there's still hot water, and yep. then not have to rush because then we have to get dressed up. You got to wear a tie, you know what I mean? And right. I like to. You have to be neat because you have inspections, so you have to be neat. So I like to always. So I always got up really early, and then I just continued that. I did that all through my life. Uh, I just just a funny thing I thought about this because you were talking about how even when you know during your criminal days, how you don't you cannot make an excuse as to why you were late or whatnot. Um, I don't know. I uh, does it take discipline to be uh, to be in a criminal lifestyle? Well, yeah. If you want to be successful at it, <laughs> just like anything else, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's the point I wanted to make. Yeah, like any any movie, like all the movies and all the TV shows where they show these guys like drinking, snorting dope, like hanging out with the girls all night. Well, that's not real life because that guy wouldn't be successful like that. Um, you know what I mean? You show me somebody like that, and anything they do, and they're just going to crash and burn. Got it. Okay. So okay. So uh, so the point here is that no matter what you're doing, whether it's legal, illegal, everything and anything that you do, if you want to be successful, it takes discipline. Now, for somebody that you know is you know obviously not in you know that uh, criminal lifestyle or you know didn't go to military school, don't have these environments that kind of force you to become disciplined. How would you tell somebody or you know to try to help them to? become a disciplined person is it just you just do it or you don't or can they what are the steps they can take to become more disciplined well you have to start off with small things but one of the things you have to say is like i i can't say, i always hear this from people i'm not a morning person i can't get up early yeah you can quit saying that first of all you're just oh, driving okay. that into your head you know what i mean like you're saying you're repeating like you're you're affirming that you're saying like i'm not a morning person or and uh, you know what go to sleep earlier Stop watching TV. Don't drink caffeine after three o'clock. I mean, there's always a reason. So get more sleep, but try something else. Just try getting up early. Try walking around the block five days a week. I mean, seriously, 30 minutes, just walk. And they, then you hear people say like, you know, I'm, my, my mom's fat, my dad's fat, I've always been fat. So this is just good, the way it's gonna be. Yeah, and they just like, they're already defeated before they even start. You have to change the way you say things because whatever you think, that's what you're going to become. That's what's going to become reality of your life. And you need to, you have to stop. They can't think that way. And you have to do, uh, you just have to, ch you have to change that. Start doing little things. Like I said, like, hey, walk. Another thing is you, like you just, you brought up, you said, oh, people say like, I just don't have the money 
really because you could buy you could walk for free you could buy a jump rope which is like six bucks seven bucks maybe you buy still a really jump good one. Rope every day man I right jump rope every and, day. and you could get a kettlebell for nothing and there's nothing right there those things you can there's nothing you can't do in any house so you know what i mean body weight exercises they're all free but you have to be disciplined and you have to do it in this in a certain time but if you can't just try doing a commitment mm. to like, see one thing through like like that's the thing like this most people will never finish jujitsu i see so many people come in and they all start off hard most never make it to blue belt mm -hmm. which is like six months to a year i didn't then, either yep and then after they make it to that they never get past to get to purple because they just people just don't want to see things through if i start something i finish it even if i don't like it you know if i'm teaching something just, happen, just for the sake of knowing that you finished it just just to, just because i started it i'm going to complete it look um, I used to read scripts for people uh, in Hollywood and get paid for it or read and I read lots of books Man, it could be the worst script in the world. I will finish it. Mm -hmm. I will finish it You know because that's what I was tasked to do. I'm gonna do it same with the book I'll, I might put it down and like put it off, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna finish it Okay, so I mean these are the things that have really kind of helped cultivate this whole Discipline thing early morning if I start something I'm gonna see it through finish it because that's just that's just how you are, um, and so. But I think what what you're trying to say for somebody that's not anywhere near close to that level is really just to make a small commitment and to really to push through with that. And once you see that happen and you continue to do that, it, that's going to increase in terms of responsibility or size of your commitment. And then that's how you grow and practice determination. Is that is that? Am I hearing you correctly? Yes, but also not to speak defeat. So don't say like uh -huh. I'm always fat or I don't know I don't know if I can do it or I'm going to try or I'm not a morning person I just don't have an hour you know like why did you say I'm going to do it how about this people come to me they're like I just want to lose 10 pounds really what why don't you just get healthy just keep working out just see what happens uh -huh. like people want to put limits on what they, what they want to achieve correct right right away like right away, like why not just why not just get to as good as far as you could go to see what you could do. Yep. Um, yeah. Sky's sky's the limit. Sky's the limit, and um, you know I, I struggle with this a lot too, Kenji. And um, I think you know um, it, obviously it's uh, not saying it was easy for you, but it's easy for you to say because you have done this for a long time and you've practiced it and you've actually worked on this. And I could say this to a certain degree too, um, but I think a lot of people have this, you know, this um, having uh, struggles and getting started. But I, I guess the whole point here would be to start small, like just like with anything, become a white belt. Yeah, yeah it takes one step. You have mm -hmm. to take that first step to start a journey. It starts with one step, then it comes the second step, and then the third and the fourth. So if take baby steps. But you got to do something. You can't yes. just if you're if you if you're just talking about it and you're just thinking it's just a dream. As soon as you take action, it becomes real. And you, but you have to do it. And you have to. What you have to do is be realistic too. It's like you have to remember that life is not fair. Life is not fast. You're not going to see immediate results. If it is immediate, it's not going to be lasting. And it's not going to be worth it. Absolutely. Just, just take it day after day, like every day. Like people always like, oh, but you do this workout. You do this. Look. Some days, a lot of days, I do not feel like it. I feel mm. beat up, tired. But, but everybody you know assumes because you do what you do, people assume that you feel like it every day, correct? Correct. Yeah. And But you know what I look at it as? It's another, it's another, it's like money in the bank. It's another day chipped away. Yes. And so, you know what, I'll, gear, I'll tell you this. I'm, I feel like that, and then when I get in and I'm done, I, I'm so glad that I did it absolutely every single time every, every time. single time i you might have to i might have to pull myself to do it and i feel like i'm grumpy but i do it and then i feel great i always ask people do you ever work out and you feel shitty afterwards and the answer is a hundred percent of times no i feel no great. yeah yep so um now uh, you know we, we talked about your past and um you know obviously where you're at now you know you're a rock city boxing trainer you train with a lot of ma fighters uh, you know, you've worked with the likes of, you know, Mark Munoz, um, 
you know, Jake Ellenberger, right? Uh, yeah. You know, uh, King Mo. I mean, these are like world superstar MMA fighters. Um, now, the question I want to ask you is from, you know, from your previous life to now, how did you kind of rewrite that story in your head from, you know, going from living this crazy criminal life into becoming this, you know, inspirational figure, helping other people, helping people that are, you know, uh, disabled become more healthier and more functional? Like, how did you rewrite that story in your head? Because I think that's something a lot of people struggle with when they're trying to go from fat to fit because they go, oh, I'm, I'm just a fat person. No, I'm just not good at this. I'm just not good at that because that's what I was thinking. And I've seen that in so many other people too. So how, like, can you walk us through a little bit as to how you rewrote that story in your head through fitness? Yes, I decided that I didn't want to be known as that. And I just started to train. And I, like I said, I listened to everyone and I sought out older trainers, you know, guys like Maca, guys that are older yes. and, and different places, all the different places I learned from old places. And I watch him and I'd ask questions and I would just constantly work on my craft and then ask questions and try to get better and work at all the minor details like punches come from the ground or when I'm doing a kettlebell, like exactly how do I hold it up? How do I hold this? What's the grip? And I would do it over and over and little by little, as you do it, and then I would start working with people, and then that first person would say, "You know, that's good." And then I would just, and I would just constantly work on my reputation because reputation is valuable. Just like I used to value my bad reputation, mm -hmm. I started valuing my good reputation. And then I would read everything that I can about it. You know, read as much as I can, watch as much videos as I can about it, and just suck in all that information so that I'm prepared. Because it's another thing: no matter what dream you have, it's the journey that builds it. Absolutely. It's the, journey, it's the journey that gets there. It's it's the lessons that you learn. You know, once you get to the journey, I mean, once you get to your goal, the goal is nothing compared to what you learned on the way there. But if here's the thing, when opportunity arises and you're not ready for it, then it's wasted. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? By learning all this and everything, I'm just waiting to help people. I'm waiting to do something. And it's just something I learned that I really enjoy it. And I just decided that this is what I'm going to do. And this is what I've been doing. That, um, you know, uh, sometimes I forget that uh, when we were at um, Fortune Gym that, um, you know, we were, I was, you know, we were surrounded by so many great champions. I just, yes. you know, because it was such a daily thing. I just, you know, sometimes I forget about the amount of knowledge and, you know, the, the you know, the, the greatness that we were around, you know what I mean? And um, uh, what, what is like the best advice that you've gotten from another coach? Let's see. I mean, I got so much good. Just like even like, just to just breathe and relax. Um, oh, that was Maca's big thing. Yeah, right? breathe, yeah, and, breathe relax, and relax. Jab, jab. Yeah. It's yeah, kind of hard to relax when like you know Maca's trying like coming at you with like these two bricks of hands and just slamming into your hands and you know I mean right. Like, but if you, if you if you really think about it, just look at it like you know breathe, relax, and move. Keep your footwork. But it also is, is the other coaches I've been I was taught like like. Budios, just never quit. Like you have a dream and just keep on going. Like this, it didn't matter because like it rained. Like I could be like the smallest, cruddiest guy there because everyone there is a world champion. But hey, I was there. I'm doing it. Yes, I show up day after day. Just like at Fortune, like you said, we had we had uh, Olympic medalists. We had yeah, Jose, Jeremy, yeah, Matt, yeah. Justin. But we had we had other guys that had Olympic team captains. Yep. We had world heavyweight champions like Liam and Bruce. I mean, we had yeah, real guys there. there. And and you know, we're there. And you know what? We hang. They see we show up every day. They see that we put in the work. And that's what that's what you learn is that okay, if someone gets to be a champion or gets to be a master at anything and good at something, they didn't just it wasn't just bought. Absolutely. We had to earn. And so you have to watch that. You have to replicate like that. I mean, I always read biographies of everyone. I just finished one about Teddy Roosevelt. And it's like, yeah, he was rich, but then he went and he did like all this stuff, you know, to accomplish it. And he became president. I mean, it's like he, people just don't, things aren't just given to you. If it is, then it doesn't last. But to accomplish great things, you have to, you have to work hard on that. Uh, before I make this next statement, I, number one, I want to say that I'm not trying to, um, you know, um, talk down on my parents or anything of that nature but i think just uh, there seems to be a, a huge common denominator in you know in people that kind of grew up in my era i don't know what it is uh, but at least i'm going to just speak for myself because i don't want to stereotype 
is that I was somehow just taught that, you know, like I'm supposed to be good at things, you know, like that's kind of what I thought as I was growing up. And when I hit real life and that wasn't the case, I was like, oh my God, like, are you like, what the, like, what the heck, you know what I mean? And so that's something that I super had to learn over the years is like, I just had to put in the work. And when I first started boxing, I wasn't losing the kind of weight that I wanted to. I'm like, well, what's, what's wrong? You know, people always say, well, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I, I, I don't know. Like, and then, and then that kind of forced me to try to go look for these secrets. And then after a very long time, obviously that's not true. Um, my very first serious trainer, he was a bodybuilder. And he said, Ken, like you have, to, I'm going to tell you the secret. You're probably not going to listen to me, uh, but I'm going to tell you anyways, which is you have to be able to enjoy the process because that's the only thing that's going to take you through this whole thing. You know what I mean? And after 10 years, now I realized that, okay, he was right. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, so many of us, uh, so I've noticed that so many people think that they're going to be good at something or they just should be because today we don't value work ethic. They give you a participation trophy. Um, yes. Okay. Look, when I was in, when I was in Pop Warner football way, way, way back, you know, they, uh, guess what? If you didn't, if you weren't good enough, you didn't play, you just sat on the bench. Okay. So my first year, guess what I did? I sat on the bench. The second year, that, that next year, I tried really, really hard to, and I made it. You know what I mean? I got to play a bunch of times and then the next year more. But that was but if they would have just gave me a trophy and like let me sit on like let, let me play no matter what, like I got a certain amount of time, I probably never would have been good at it. Right. You know? And, and honestly, I, I mean, and that's basically meritocracy. Like I think meritocracy couldn't hurt at first, can bruise your ego, but in the end, I think that's what really drives somebody to want to be great at something because they want to feel that meritocracy again and that they know that they work for it. And this was not something that was handed to them for participating, but you earned it because you were good at it because you put in time to do it. That, that's it. I mean, look at, look at, like I keep saying to everybody, life's not fair. Not everyone's a champion, but yes. like I said, you can be the best person that you can be. And if you go out there, you give a thousand, a hundred percent of yourself and you leave it all out there. You know what? You're going to have a good result. You may not be, you may not hit the winning touchdown, but guess what? You're going to get close and you're going to be, you're going to have your moment. Absolutely. And, and um, I think this is a perfect time. Um, could you kind of recap? Uh, I, I was reading on your blog. Um, you, you, I think it was a recent uh, blog post. Could you tell us about that story about, you know, Mark Munoz, where, you know, obviously he never won the bell, but, you know, he was just voted the nice guy in UFC and you know, basically what he kind of taught you and that little story right there. I think that'd be a great okay. story. Well, uh, yeah, I was when I was talking to Mark Munoz, Mark Munoz, you know, I mean, he he was a uh, I met him when he was in the WEC, uh, right right before we started doing that. And then before he got in the UFC, and his first UFC fight, I trained with him the whole time. He lost it. But instead of just sitting, laying down, he could have just quit at that point. He was back in the gym the next week, and we just kept working. And Mark was like, like he could have a good run, and then he would lose. And so he never became a, a UFC champion, but he always taught us to put in the work ethic, we practice, 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 drill, drill, drill. And he always had a positive attitude at every practice. And when Mark retired, he was voted like the nicest guy in MMA. But besides that, Mark has, he taught me like just to work at things and to, and to be the best that you can be. And what Mark's, Mark was talking about is live, live a, a rad lifestyle and just, and just, um, I mean, you have to like have the you have to you have to you have to have the attitude and the desire to really to get to where you want to be, and you could be a champion in life. It's not just about uh, you know getting everything for yourself. It's it, to be a champion it is a whole bunch of different things all Absolutely. coming into one. It's Absolutely. not it's not just like oh I own the belt. It's like no, the hard work that you put in, the lessons that you learn, and what you give off to other people. Along yeah. the way. Who who do you touch on the way up? Who do you touch all around? And that's see that's that's the thing that drives me now is like I want to make a difference. I don't want to be known as like hey I was a criminal. I want to be known as the guy like who helped people, change people's lives. Right. You know what I mean? I love it. Like when I, I trained a guy here and, and he's he was about over four hundred and now he's down to three thirty four. Oh, we we spoke I mean, about him last time. Yeah, and he's still losing. He, wow. Dude, the guy shows up at the gym. He shows up at the gym. He keeps coming. And it's like, to me, it's just, it's so incredible because he told me, he goes, look at last year, I, I couldn't play ball with my son. I couldn't play catch. 
now I can't. He goes, I, I couldn't go to a concert because I could only walk like part way and then I lose my breath. And if I couldn't stand during it, and if I did, I had to wait till everyone to leave and it'd take me two hours to get back to the car. He goes, now I went to a concert. I stood the whole time. I walked back to my car and he goes, and guess what? I'm here the next day. I'm not even tired. That, that's amazing, man. I remember when I didn't like to go to concert ball games because I couldn't fit in the seats. You know what I mean? I mean, I could fit in the seats, but I was spilling all over the place. I was being so self-conscious. So, you know, those days don't seem too far away. So that that's incredible. And, you know, going back to the whole, like, you know, Mark Munoz uh, MMA story, I think a lot of times me as an MMA UFC fan, sometimes I actually not even a fan of the champion sometimes because I feel like I learned so much more from people that don't get the belt, you know, because of their grind and their hard work ethic. And, um, you know, I don't want to turn into an MMA conversation, but, you know, just quickly, like, you know, obviously, you know, Conor McGregor's making a lot of noise. I'm like, okay, he's very entertaining. He gives me a lot of entertainment value, but I'm not quite sure if this is the kind of guy that's leaving a legacy for being such an impactful person. You kind of know what I'm saying? Yeah. The one, one more thing about the whole the whole thing about being a champion is not about winning. It's about losing and then coming back. It's about yeah. what you learn in the loss. Remember that. Like even King Mo, when it, when I had him in – Yes, I, I read him, that he, one too. He, yeah, he said, look, I, I don't even know where my belt is. I don't have any idea where my belts are. <laughs> I don't know where my wrestling trophies are. I don't know where my medals are. He goes, it doesn't even matter. He goes, I just get to do what I love to do. And it's about coming back and being the best person that I can be. That, That's it. Yes. That is so. so. I, I read that and I was like, wow, you know, he's like, you know, uh, the wins are not what makes me. It's really the losses that what makes me. And, you know, he's the same type of guy, as it seems like, from Mark, where yeah. he loses. Like, he, you know, he won against Gagar and he lost the next fight. He was right back in the gym. And, you know, like I see videos of him still training. He's over at TMT training with the Mayweather. He's just all yeah. over the place, you know. Like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I know this guy's not in the USC, but does, does this guy? And, let me all say this. I don't think just because you're not in the UFC doesn't mean you're not a fighter because there's so many great promotions yeah. out there. And this guy is just grinding and grinding. I'm like, every time I turn on, he's another training camp. I'm like, does this guy ever take a break? And I think people that, you know, that really want to do something in life, they just don't know how to take breaks sometimes. And I think, you know, at a certain point, it may not be good. But for the most part, I, I think that, you know, we just feel so weird when we're not, putting in work you know it just feels like i'm being useless and after you cultivate that i think that the other side of it is that it's kind of hard to shut it off sometimes oh it's really hard i always feel even even like uh like sundays i usually take off i mean even but i don't take off i still take a walk i take yes. walk my dogs i do i do stuff but i feel like sometimes during the day i start feeling like man i'm, I'm lazy today i didn't do anything yeah, yeah <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean and uh it's just hard but you have to because you have to you have to you have to let your body recover, you have to let your mind recover, you have to turn it off at some point. Right, right. And that's what I do. And um, you know, uh I, I kinda wanna close this up, but um, you know, what are three mantras that you live by, Kenji? Um, just because I think um, you know, um after obviously this is uh, this great podcast i think i just want to give people a couple nuggets uh, no pun intended because you uh you know you do gold pan is it called gold panning yeah prospecting okay. uh prospecting um no pun intended but um what are three mantras i think you know that you live by that i think people can kind of take away as nuggets uh you know that they can take away with them to really just kind of put into use uh starting today this is this is what i do this is what i think is I'm always on time. You got to put in the work, Oops. and uh, but you got to put in the work, and just make no excuses. <laughs> okay. None. Just make none. Just you know, hey, something goes wrong. It's my fault, but I'm making yes. it up. That's it. Yes. Done. Done. I think once you know, uh, and you know, what I really try to do, and the whole point of these podcasts is to find common denominators amongst people that really make it under when i say make it i don't even necessarily mean in terms of money but just making life in terms of they just have a great outlook they know what's up and the one common thing that a lot of success people say is everything is your fault and once you realize that and you know that either you put in the work or you don't and then whatever happens from that it's your fault whether it's good okay. or bad yep it comes down to this personal responsibility that's it and take it take ownership of it own it take it it's yours Awesome, man. Uh, well, Kenji, um, thank you so much. Um, you know, I, I know you're a busy guy and for you to 
you know, uh, to come on my podcast means a lot because I know, you know, we've known each other for about 10 years. Um, yeah. So thank you very much. And, you know, obviously it just brings me like an extra sense of like nostalgia because I know you've seen me through such a crazy transformation from the very beginning. So, um, and you've always you given, yeah. I met you at the very beginning. I can yes. remember exactly when you first even started and you're like, and you were huge. And yeah. you're like, and you're like, I gotta do this. And I'm like, you gotta keep doing it. You're right. And I told yeah. you. Well, I was out in back, I'll tell you exactly where we were in the back of the parking lot at Cumberland. Yeah. And I, I was telling you, you gotta keep doing this. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, um, and then you know what? I found that you ride, and you know, that was you know, you actually, after I heard that, I was like, okay, that's so cool. And, you know, that was part of the reason why I started writing as well too. So uh, thank you very much for that. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I'm not quite sure if you want this or not, but if, you know, yeah. if the audience wants to follow you anywhere for your messages or whatnot, where can they follow you? Um, at, I'm at www.betterlivedlives.com. Yes. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. So any, they can find me. Okay, cool. I'll basically just uh, link that down below. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Kenji. Um, do you All have right. anything else you'd like to say? Nope. That's it. It was great. Great seeing you. Great, cool. great talking to you. All right, man. Thank you so much, Kenji. I'll see you All soon. Right. All right. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. All right, guys. So there you have it. Um, that was episode number eight. Man, what a crazy, crazy story, guys. Um, sorry we couldn't get his face on there, but the information, the value was incredible. Um, I'm so stoked, guys. So uh, thank you very much for watching, guys, and um, have a great day. This is Fatboy Shrink TV. I'm out.